I played about 12 hours of Hearthstone yesterday, and these were the decks that did the best on day one of Festival of Legends. The first day of Festival of Legends was an absolute refresher that I believe everybody needed in the Hearthstone community because I think I saw a lot of people trying to play the fun decks before I saw people trying to play the good decks. But guess what? The good decks are always going to find their way to the front because, well, it turns out that Paladin is on top according to HS Replay, but I don't even think that is the best class as of right now because look at how tight these stats are right now. It is very unfortunate though that these, like this is a very big range, very big range, 58% on top versus 41% of Mage being on the bottom. And unfortunately, of, I mean, well, I guess fortunately for most people, Warrior is actually not the bottom, but I have to say unfortunately here because the last time that I checked, it was at the bottom. So hopefully there's going to be some uh, something that that emerges for Warrior that's going to be able to burst it up a little bit in the, in the win rates. But something to keep in mind is that there is still a really good Rogue deck out there. Spoiler alert, it's still just Miracle Rogue. Uh, but it's still down here on the uh, number 8 on the list, so you can't always use this as the... Uh, as the be-all, say-all of the Hearthstone meta, which is why we have Hearthstone meta tabs. And as we can clearly see, there is an outlier in the meta right now, as I have to move myself because I'm in the way. But Outcast Demon Hunter is completely shattering expectations because everybody knew this would be good, but nobody thought it would be 60% good. And then this is only in top legend. I mean, that's why this is only legend, not even top legend. And top legend squeezes in another extra percent as the pure paladin goes down a little bit more. And unfortunately, we still have some stats from the previous patch uh, kind of interfering here, like Evolve Shaman and Big Spell Mage. But the fact that Outcast and Demon Hunter has put itself to the top of the ladder is shocking to say the least. So let me go ahead and show you guys what I believe are five, maybe even seven, playable decks that you can totally take to Legend right now. And the first deck that we're going to look at is, of course, the Vicious Syndicate Outcast and Demon Hunter. They absolutely nailed it on the head with this deck because it is the most popular deck that I think I've seen. And not to be, not to, I don't want to call for a nerf yet, but I'm kind of getting sick of this deck a little bit, dude. Just because, like, I literally had a situation where my opponent, I was playing a bit of a slow deck, they played security for three one ones on turn three, and I was like, all right, well, I have to set up my turn because I think I was playing like Naga Mage or something, so I couldn't deal with the one ones. And then suddenly they just tempoed Helavera Dark Vein, uh, Dark Raven on turn four, and then just increased the entire attack by the board, and then suddenly I was just, com I, I think I literally had nine HP by turn four. This deck can deal an unreal amount of damage extremely quickly, and then when you, uh, you know, you factor in Lady Satheno combos and the fact that you can put Rowdy Fan on top of Lady Satheno, oh my god, dude, that is a lot of damage for every single spell. However, if you don't like Rowdy Fan, I have seen some people cut this card for an Unleash spell, which kind of makes sense in uh, a lot of aggro matchups, so if you don't 100% like this list, this might be a better one to play if you want more ways of being able to deal with the Outcast Demon Hunter. But Rowdy Fan really does have a place in this deck because it is, it's just a cold blood on a stick. And I'm surprised that this doesn't find two way or two copies into this deck. But when you have cards like Glaive Tar and the synergy that they can produce, sometimes having more three mana cards is not the way that you want to go. So it's like this deck is extremely powerful and I would highly recommend it if anyone is just trying to quickly hit Legend. But I can pretty much say that if this trend continues with Demon Hunter, something in this deck is getting nerfed. Next up is Paladin, and I'm actually happy to report that Pure Paladin is still a good archetype, and Blood Crusader Countess combos are still going to be fun and interactive for the Paladin players. Now, the big thing that I'm wondering is how good is Hand of a Doll, because if you guys don't remember, this card used to be extremely good as, like, one of the only draw cards for aggro Paladin decks. But if you have, if you have a turn one into this, this is just still a really good combo in order to set up for, like, a turn three or with, like, a, a Blood Seal or maybe, like, a Muster for Battle or something like that. I'm not too sure why Shimmering Sunfish is in here outside of getting another Divine Shield and maybe playing a bit defensively as the aggro deck. But Disco Maul, dude. Disco Maul works really well in this deck because you have synergies like Sinful Sous Chef just giving you extra minions and you're always drawing into more minions with, like, Grime Scree Outfitter. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought this card was was banner man this, this card doesn't draw a minion it buffs your minions i apologize for that but if you do want to draw minions you do still have purator and the light rays in order to fill out so many different minion tribes that this card is essentially like a draw infinite i don't know how many different tribes in this deck i don't feel like counting but this is still an extremely good deck just because it's an aggro deck it, it's exactly what paladin is known for play a minion buff minion it doesn't die it hits face if anything they might need to look into Paladin because the stats on Paladin 
have been consistent for like the past year where Paladin I believe is always like in top five always in the green by the way because it's simple like play style is not only um I guess infectious to lower uh, ranked players because they love being able to just play, play the card the card does its thing and deals damage but it's also just a thing to where it's shocking that Paladin is always on top so maybe pure Paladin needs to be adjusted just a little bit I'm not saying that it should be, but maybe just to open up the meta a little bit so things aren't as aggressive. I'm just I'm just honestly speculating. I'm not calling for a nerf, but I just find it interesting that there's always been a tier 1 Paladin deck according to the data. And next up is for all of you gamers that haven't played any of the new cards and don't want to play any of the new cards. I just found this particularly funny. I'm not 100% recommending it, but uh, Unholy DK has com has been completely unchanged. This is the same list that I was playing before the rotation went live and it is still playable the only playable deck that i could have from rotation so if you guys don't have any new cards i think that unholy dk is a pretty fun deck that you can still have success with but if you want to run new cards or i should say card then you can put death growl in here and maybe make a few slight adjustments so that way cards like tour guide can really juice the value out of your death growl because you can do one of two things with well, one of three things technically you can stick it on an egg you can stick it on a different egg, or you can put it on your card draw, or technically on your 1-1s, or on your minions that summon 1-1s, but that's not really all too good. I'm kind of surprised not to see Cage Head in this deck, just because, you know, I thought that maybe someone would try it. This is a no-hands list, by the way. And if you do want to be a little bit more gimmicky, you could go ahead and put the Cage Head in here. I'm not really sure what you take out. You can probably just take out like a one drop or like maybe even just like take out this egg, but then you have less synergies with the with the death growl. So I'm just gonna say let's take out an amalgam and put in the cage head. Maybe not the best option here, but I like the idea of cage head because if you were to kill this off uh, with the uh, the construction, then you have an immediate combo or I'm sorry, an immediate damage dealing uh, nine nine. You get to deal 9 damage immediately. I don't know exactly where I was going with that. But the other idea is if you were to play Cage Head with Tour Guide and then have Death Growl. Oh, I'm sorry, with Tour Guide already played and have Death Growl in hand, then you could potentially stick this Death Rattle on two other minions. Guaranteed one other minion that you can trade into immediately and get that 9 9. So if you have the Construct Corner already, already on the field, you could do something like this. But something that you've probably already noticed is that I've sa I said turn 9 as an aggro deck. So there's probably reasons why people don't play this card and just go with the uh, the undead packages just because it'll deal more damage and be a bit more effective. But if you want to play Cage Head, this is one deck that you could slot it into. Next up, we have Frost DK, and there's not really a whole lot of things that, are, that have really changed with this deck except for the inclusion of Hardcore Cultist. I tried to make a deck that spotlighted, uh, that, that, that used as many different new cards as possible, like Mosh Pit, like Metronome, for example. I even put in a Rowdy Fan in this deck, and I like Rowdy Fan, but people are just saying that the AoE is really all you need, and I'm kind of sad that this is the direction the deck has gone because it is still almost card for card the exact same list. Like, okay, we lost Bran, and we lost another card. I can't even remember what the other card was, but that's pretty much what Hardcore Cultist uh, has been put in place of, and now that the, I'm pretty sure the curve of the deck is still somewhat similar, but we don't run Harbinger, Ella, uh, we don't run Harbinger anymore, Harbinger of Winter. Wow, we really don't run this card anymore, wow. Well, I mean, I guess it makes sense because this is the only card we really want to use uh, to draw spells because this card can sometimes get in the way of the two damage AoE, but... Case in point, you have another 2 damage AoE, so it's just like, I don't know. This is the best deck in the meta, and it's kind of sad to me that there's not really all too many new cards, because I really wanted a combo like Lady Death Whisper and Mosh Pits to work, so that way I could play my Lady Death Whisper, put Mosh Pit, uh, give it Death Rattle, and then suddenly one Frost Room Fury becomes four. Apparently... Playing for tempo is just the better way to play this archetype right now, and it does kind of sadden me that we're not going to be able to put Mosh Pit into this deck, but hey man, if you're a big Frosty K fan, your deck literally hasn't lost any power. One thing I am very concerned about is how many decks that were really good in the previous expansion are still very good right now with minimal changes to the lists. And honestly, I'm not even 100% sure if Breakdance should belong in this deck. But one synergy that I believe is important to note is that Breakdance with uh, Scribbling Stenographer is actually an insane 
consistent synergy because you're always playing this card for like one or zero mana anyway. You break dance it, you get it back to your hand, and then you have a four four or a four attack minion that's summoned with this, and then yet another four four that you can play from hand. And don't even get me started on how good Draka and Sinstone still are. They are still insane cards. I cannot believe this card was printed as two mana. Give a minion also stealth like this. This archetype is just going to be extremely good, and one thing I am very worried about is how you can do Muzzle Their Magic, Shadow Step, Muzzle Their Magic, Shadow Step, Muzzle Their Magic, Shadow Demise into Muzzle Their Magic, and then if you have two more ma uh, mana, you can play another Cult Neophyte, making your opponent's spells cost four more, making it that much more difficult to even begin to think about dealing with Sin Stones as well as dealing with the Draka weapon. This deck is my contestant to probably being one of the best decks, if not the best deck, if put into the right hands. Granted, it does need a metagame to support it if things are extremely aggressive at the lower ranks. It's really hard to play with Miracle Rogue. But again, at the lower ranks, people are not playing their outs fully, they're not mulliganing properly, and sometimes they're making very crucial mistakes that are going to lose automatic win games if you knew what you were doing. However, the potential of this deck is still here, it's still scary, and I swear to God, if Miracle Rogue is the number one deck, I'm going to be upset. It could be number two. It could be number two. I don't care if it's number two. Just please, for the love of God, I don't want this deck to be the best deck in Hearthstone for another expansion. Next up, we have what I had the most fun with on day one, and that was Naga Spell Light Show OTK Weird Tempo Deck. I'm not, I, this is just a weird deck that I am absolutely in love with because Spite Lash Simon is one of my favorite mage cards that has come out in recent years. And well, the addition of Mistake maybe was just a mistake for this deck because now we have a third one mana Naga that we can put into this deck because you do have Vicious Slither Spear as the original, but don't forget you do have School Teacher in order to set up your Spite Lash Simon combos. Now you guys are probably noticing the Light Show. Light Show Mage has been abysmal on the, uh, on the, on the meta tabs and on the data and all of that because people don't know how to build this deck. But I believe the best way to use Light Show is in the deck that cheats the most amount of mana. Because something that you can do is obviously you can find other copies of Light Show from Re Rewind. But something else to consider is that Vat Wisdom, um, Vast Wisdom, I keep calling this Vat Wisdom like a Vat of Acid. I don't know why, it's just me pronouncing the words too quickly. So if I say Vat again, just understand that. Uh, but Vast Wisdom can give you a one mana light show depending on what card you discover from this. So there are so many ways of being able to discover extra light shows that you deal a lot of damage. Don't forget, there's a spell damage Naga in this deck. So you can easily make these deal four and then shoot five extra four damage light shows and this card becomes sig significantly scary. I literally did a turn six OTK playing the siren, doing all the combo and then playing light shows and killing my opponent all by turn six. And this is going to be the next deck spotlight that I end up making, which is going to come out in the next couple of hours. So if you like this content, feel free to like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. But regardless, man, Naga Mage feels like it has potential again, but in an aggressive meta, it's not going to do the best. But I had to put this on the list because I thought this was the most fun deck that I could play on day one. I had a lot of success with it, averaging about a 50%. With a lot of misplays, by the way. My god, the, the amount of times I played Naga into Naga into Naga instead of Naga, Naga spell. Oh my god, that, that drove me crazy. But re regardless, man, this deck has a ton of potential. And once you see the video that I'm posting later today, you might be sold on this deck. And the last deck that I need to showcase is Bunny Hopper's Warrior. Because my god, Warrior may not have the best stats in the world, but not everybody is Bunny Hopper. And once, once I explain this deck to you, you guys are probably going to immediately copy this deck code. Because I saw the giants in here, and I didn't understand it at first. But trust me, they are good. You want to know why they're good? How about gaining 20 armor from Igneous Lava Gorger? Pretty good, right? Well, that's only if it's at the bottom of your deck, so that's kind of a high roll, right? Well, hold on a second. What happens if we black rock and roll give all your minions... In your deck, attack and attack and health equal to their cost. Oh my god, that's a 28-28. Now do you see the magic? This can literally be a zero mana 28-28. Thank just 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 hope that your opponent doesn't have uh doesn't have 
solid removal for this card. But that is what is going on with this deck right here. It is trying to be Control Warrior with a legitimate win condition of playing big minions by playing Black Rock and Roll into Trench Stalker, Naga Giant, or even Ramornia and De uh, Decimator Olgra. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you do draw these cards, you can play Finley. And something that is very important to take note of, depending on what the far left card is, and if you've drawn half of your deck, you could literally do a combo. Like, let's say that Trench Stalker is in the far left of your hand, and you haven't drawn Black Rock and Roll yet with half of your cards in your hand and the other half in your deck. You play Finley, essentially swap those, you find the Black Rock and Roll, play it, and then the next turn you can get value out of your Trench Stalker, so there is ways of turning your low rolls into legitimate plays that might be able to win the game. And then in that in that aspect, you might even be able to throw out some 8-8s depending on uh, if they're at the bottom of your deck or not. So this deck has a lot of potential for it, and Warrior still is going to have to go under a lot of changes to figure out if this is the way to play Warrior or if Menagerie is just the way that we need to start investing our time. But this this deck is a great way of being able to utilize Black Rock and Roll, Last Stand into Zilliax, or even potentially into an Igneous Lava Gorger to potentially give you even 20 armor. There's also Sword Eater, but let's not focus on Sword Eater. This card is just really good off of the Chorus Riff, and if it happens off a of Last Stand, it's not the greatest, but it's still a Taunt Minion that gets in the way, especially if you've juiced it with Black Rock and Roll. This is just a really cool deck, and I had to showcase it. It's not the best, so play this deck at your own discretion, but Bunny Hopper was able to reach rank 10 legend with this deck, and I think that there's a lot of potential going for Warrior. It's just a matter of how to be able to make the perfect build. But there you guys have it. That is about five, six, seven. I don't know how many decks I put in here. The point is, I'm giving you Hearthstone decks for free, so you might as well like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel to make sure that you're notified about every single deck that I make a video about. The next video is going to be covering Naga Mage because I had an insane turn six pop off that I have to share with you guys. And if you haven't already seen that, go ahead and check out Twitter because that clip is already on Twitter. That's usually how you can tell what I'm going to post next uh, is what I post on Twitter. But guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video, and we'll see you for the next one.